What's up? Hello. Welcome back to Sammy and Creepy. If you are new here, my name is Sammy and this is where I tell you about something creepy. Also, I do have a members only. I'm going to be putting more effort into this channel. <laughs> But I have a members only that I started since I started doing lives. So it has a bunch of cute little emojis and emotes and all that stuff. It's like five bucks, I think. I did the lowest. I think I did the lowest you can do. It's just five little dollars. And it's, you get like little emotes and emojis by your name and some other perks. I'll have to look. I can't remember what I put on there. But yeah. So if you'd like to join my channel, that is now available and I want to try to start doing lives more, so where we like react to videos, or maybe um, you guys can talk to me while I play games. It just depends. It just can be random. Anything to do with creepy, fun stuff that I'm into. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about some creepy Ouija board stories that I found on Reddit. Because while I will never personally use a Ouija board, I love reading about people who did and why they regret it. <laughs> So, we're going to read from this thread on Reddit Ghosts. Does anyone have experiences that scared you away from using Ouija boards? You should not use a Ouija board. I'm going to put this disclaimer out there. If, I mean, if you're not afraid of them and you know what you're doing, go for it. But if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to properly use one, um, and you don't want to be haunted then don't use one because remember when you use a Ouija board you are opening a portal you are inviting anything you can't control what it is you're talking to or who you're talking to and you're inviting them into your space if you do not properly close it they can come into your space um, there are several mistakes that can be made using a Ouija board and a lot of times people don't know how to use them properly and then they end up letting something in that they didn't intend to and the bad thing is this thing can show itself or start causing problems whenever it feels like it it can be dormant for a while and then all of a sudden send your life into chaos like or haunt you and terrify you you just don't know so it's better to just not but if you're going to at least be safe and use it properly i will not okay let's see User Green Av Average User <laughs> says, Back in the 1980s, I lived with roommates who went Ouija crazy. Had to leave when shit got weird. I had three roommates who started using the board. At first, it didn't. At first, it didn't work, but they kept at it until they got a good response. Then they almost got addicted to it. They wanted to use it all the time. The whole thing ended on a Friday night. I worked until 11 p.m. and got home late. The planchette was flying around the board and everyone was excitedly talking about the little girl on the board who had died in the 1920s. Whatever. I wasn't a believer, so I went to my room and turned on the TV. I could hear them chattering and suddenly a different spirit took over the board. I came out to see. The spirit kept going to the C and the Z and they called him Chaz. This was in 86 or 87, so maybe this was Z-A-Z-A. -Z -A? I don't know. One of them started taunting the spirit named Chaz, saying if he was such a big bad spirit, how come he couldn't do anything off the board? The room got quiet, but nothing happened. But the energy just shifted, and then two things happened in a quick succession. The Christmas lights that were hung around the ceiling started blinking. This was the 80s. We didn't have fairy lights with remotes. They were white lights on a green wire that blinked if you removed the first light on the string. Other than that, they're steady white. No one had ever changed them to blinking. They had been hung around the room near the ceiling since September. They never blinked. They started blinking. This shocked the shit out of me. Then, this huge ashtray that someone had stolen from a hotel in New Hampshire burst into three pieces and the glass went flying. Everyone flipped out. Me too. Lights were turned on, candles were put out, etc. Shortly after this, a week or two, I don't remember, my roommate stayed with her boyfriend for the week. I got off work at 11, but was anxious in our shared room, felt watched, so I turned on the TV for company. I turned the volume down before I fell asleep, but I left the TV on. The volume turned itself all the way up at 3 a.m., and I'm all alone in this creepy dorm room. I moved out of that room that night and stayed with friends to the end of the semester. 
Yeah. Um, your friends definitely contacted a demon. <laughs> The unpopular opinion I think that most of the time it's something dark that gets contacted also I made um I don't know if you guys know Kylie Pitts on TikTok I recently learned about her and her coffee looks so freaking good and I made one <laughs> I put Halloween sprinkles on the top so this story is not mine but a friend of mine's she was a preteen and had a sleepover oh this is user sexy Sadie May Glutz with a Z <laughs> This story is not mine, but a friend of mine. She was a preteen and had a sleepover. Someone brought a Ouija board and they decided to play. They supposedly contacted a young girl about their age, talked to her for a while, accused one another of pushing the planchette. Nothing really happened during the session. Later on, when it was time to fall asleep, there was a squeaking sound coming from the closet. My friend went to see what the noise was. There was a dog toy in the closet that was squeezing itself. It continued to squeak for the rest of the night, terrifying all the girls at the slumber party. Nobody got a wink of sleep that night. Yeah, uh, who could? When I was 15, I was hanging out at my friend Sam's house near Halloween time. Her parents were out of town. Someone put Hellraiser on the TV for atmosphere, and someone brought a Ouija board over, and it was a small party. There was about 12 of us there. Sam and R were my two besties and were having fun asking the question, asking the board questions. I had been studying spirituality, especially Wicca, for a few years at that point and didn't like the energy in the room, so I quickly went outside to smoke a cigarette and look at the stars. When I came back in, the planchette was moving pretty quickly and it was giving answers that were kind of creepy. It felt weird, so I asked for a turn at the board. When I sat down, I mentally cast sacred space around the room and invoked the divine, then asked a question out loud. The planchette did not move. It continued not moving for the rest of the night after I invoked sacred space. That was enough to tell me that something was being channeled that was not healthy and therefore should avoid. LOL, my friends accused me of breaking the board, but we still had fun for the rest of the night. Several years later, my spiritual mentor told me that spirit boards are fine in the hands of a gifted medium who knows how to use one properly. However, for those who don't know what they are doing, it's like setting up a beacon in the, inter in the energetic realm. Kind of like opening up a door to a house in a big city with all the lights on and... And a welcome, come on in sign at the front door. That is accurate. You don't have any control over what comes through. Speaking of like welcome mats, I learned not that long ago about not having any mat that says welcome or enter or come in or anything like that at your front door. And I have not had one since because I feel like that makes so much sense spiritually. Like what are you, you, like you're giving permission. So I don't do that anymore. So if you didn't know about that, yeah, that's a thing. I used one a few times growing up as a kid, but nothing ever really happened. In college, my roommates and I did one on Halloween. Instantly, something was picked up. We were drunk and thought it was quite hilarious until we asked who it was and it said it was a classmate that had passed away a few years prior. They gave us accurate info as to who their friends were, their family, their hobbies, and we realized that we were living in the same apartment that they have lived in prior. It felt very genuine until the planchette started zooming from Z to A and back and forth. Z A, Z A, Z A, Z A, and flew off the board. We brought it back and said goodbye, and we were all so freaked out that none of us have ever really told anyone or talked about it again. That is the thing. I've said this in all of my Ouija board videos. That thing, if you contact that entity, or I feel like that, I almost feel like those things, the ZA, the ZO, I feel like it's not just one entity. I feel like it's a bunch and that's like their tell almost. But they will pretend to be someone that they are not in order to get your trust, make you feel comfortable, and then get your permission. Don't trust it. Went to a small house party as a teen where I only knew one or two people there. Someone decided it was a good idea to F around and find out, so pulled out a board from the hall closet. Well, to keep the story short, one of the girls there started getting anxious, then uncharacteristically giggling, which quickly evolved into cursing with her voice going up a couple of octaves which evolved further into manic laughter and crying while in the fetal position on the living room floor. This girl was one of the ones that had her hands on the planchette and asking some seriously stupid questions in my honest opinion, even back then as a teen. 
Someone ended up calling 911 and her mom. We probably messed with that board around 20 minutes and didn't close the session properly either. Come to find out later, of course. Every one of us was sober to my knowledge. That was enough for me. Maybe coincidence, but never again. Yeah, no. I had an experience that scared me away from using Ouija boards for a long time, but I still occasionally go back. Anyhow, about 10 years ago, a friend and I decided to F around with a Ouija board. It was moving slowly and kind of spelling out nonsense words at first, then it began to spell out something over and over again. It did not look to be English, so I wrote it out on a, a paper, still believing it to be nonsense. The word looked Italian. I will admit I do know some Italian, but the friend I was playing with did not. I did not know this word. I looked it up. The word translated to choke completely freaked me the F out. The ambiance in the room seemed to change also. I'm not sure how to explain it. It just felt quieter, darker, colder. We immediately stopped playing after that. That thing was threatening you. I was 13 over at a friend's slumber party for her birthday. Me, her, her sister, and another one of our friends were playing the Ouija board. I had never seen one or heard one before then, so I had no idea what it even was. Nothing happened, but while we were asking questions, I started to feel very uncomfortable. Like claustrophobic feeling became hard to breathe and I just had to step outside for a few minutes. When I came back, they had put the board up. I was feeling better. A little bit later, um, we all went upstairs and went to bed. While I was laying on the top of the bunk, I seen some shadowy movement in the light and one of the night lights in my peripheral. She had grabbed one of her sister's plastic baby dolls and put it on her dresser earlier and sat it in front of the night light to block some light out because the night light was too bright for our eyes to sleep. At first, I thought it was one of the girls that had gotten up, but when I looked over, there was a shape of a hand inside the doll. Then the hand placed its palm up against the chest of the doll from the inside, and then it disappeared, like evaporated. I woke up the whole house yelling. I haven't played one since. <laughs> Me. I was probably 11 or 12 years old, fooling around with the Ouija board with friends in one of their basements. We were getting some creepy answers, but what scared me the most was out of nowhere, these intense blasts of freezing cold air would come across the board, like sticking your hand into a deep freezer. Surrounding areas in the room itself were normal temperature. It was really freaky, and I've never touched one since. Yeah, that is something that, um, that is, people like to debunk it. I don't care. That is something that happens with, um, any kind of paranormal situation if you just have random cold air in places where there's no breeze or like like uh my friend and I did a ghost tour not that long ago and I, to be honest even though I'm a believer when I go on these ghost tours I'm like it's a gimmick kind of thing I mean yeah they're given the history and it's really cool to hear and then they tell you about the hauntings and stuff but I will say that there was only one place on this ghost tour that really gave me a bad vibe and the thing is, I, okay, I'm short. I'm four foot 11. My friend is 5'10", 5'10", 5'11". She's literally a foot taller than me, right? So I'm standing next to her. She's here, I'm here. My hand is down between, so pretend my thumb is my hand. <laughs> my hand is down by my side in between me and her. It's July. I believe it was July or August we went. It was hot as shit, okay? We're in Florida. All of a sudden, after we were shown this picture of this dark figure, um, we walked out to the area where, I believe in the area where it was pictured, and I just got this really weird feeling like I got these chills. That was the only picture of the entire night that bothered me, and all of a sudden, I felt my hand that was between me and her, so over here, there's no breeze. Remember, it's hot and humid, Florida. All of a sudden, my arm and hand, like, got really cold like something was touching me but it didn't make sense because if there was a breeze it would have hit the the hand that was on the outside not the one that was between me and her and we're in the middle of a group of people there's no freaking breeze and it got really cold and I just got the worst feeling ever and when we moved it stopped and I told her I'm like something just freaking touched me it is 90 degrees out here and my hand just got Cold, just the top of my hand and arm got cold like something cold like like I stuck my hand in a deep freezer it was so creepy after that nothing else happened but it was just like ew <laughs> I accidentally stumbled into my Ouija board experience and I was 100% skeptical until the end my best friend Jay 
walked into my other friend's house. Typically, we'd head over there and chill or play video games. This happened to be inside attempting to contact something or someone. As soon as me and my friend walked in, our other friend, we'll call M, stood straight up, turned extremely pale, and ran out of the house to the end of the neighborhood. We chased after him, wondering what the hell was going on. When he got to the end of the neighborhood, he started projectile vomiting. We walked him back to the house, and at this point, he was not speaking and walking around with it like a pale face or like an empty face. We... When we got back to the house, M sat crisscross in the corner of the dark dining room, not saying a word for hours. All this time, I was complaining about him being dramatic and to cut the act. 2 a.m. rolls around and I need to head home. I go out, start my car, and my windshield is covered with this crazy thick fog. It t I turned on defrost and waited 10 minutes. Nothing. I decided to pull around the cul-de-sac to be facing the exit. I wait a few more minutes and grab a shirt from my back seat. I got out and wiped the windshield and then got back in and wiped the inside. Nothing. After that, I hit my windshield wipers and two perfect handprints dragging across my windshield were uncovered from the fog and everything else remained. At this point, my heart sank and I was terrified. I drove home with my head out of my side window so I could see I was not about to hang around any longer. The following Monday at school, I apologized to M for being a skeptic and asking him why he ran. He said when we opened the door, a six-foot shadow figure followed us in and he was trying to get away. I still get chills thinking about it. I just got chills reading about it. Oh my gosh. I want to, I think I want to do a video on shadow figures if I haven't already. I think I have, but it's probably been a while. Okay. That's where we're going to end it because I think I want to film a story time on my experience from this past weekend with the same friend that I did the ghost tour with. We went to a haunted location this weekend and it turned into being creepy and scary for other reasons as well. So I think I'm going to do a story time on that. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, these Reddit stories. Let me know of any other topics you want me to search on Reddit and read experiences about, and I will. And I hope you're having a really good October, and I hope you have the best Halloween. We're about to get into Krampus season, aka Christmas, which I'm so excited about. I love Christmas as much as I love Halloween. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Do all the things that YouTube wants you to do to let them know that you like my videos. And don't forget to stay creepy.